Hey guys, this is Ravenclaw What If. Welcome back to another What If story. Now let's get right into this What If. As we start our What If, as Izuku is sitting on the table in the kitchen in the Hall of Justice, eating some leftover pizza that Black Canary ordered last night, he seemed to be enjoying the food very much. Whoever invented this delicious food product, I think I will not kill the creator of this cheesy substance. I'll, I'll even spare their family line when my father finally takes over this backwater planet. And of course, of you, nice lady, you, you will be spared. You've been very kind to me. In, in, introduce me to, to, uh, sorry, you introduce me to all sorts of tasty things. I also want to try this thing you call ice cream. You're welcome. I would prefer for your father not to take over my 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 world. Black Canary is nowhere. Sorry, Black Canary is not. Sorry, sorry again. Black Canary is nowhere taking Izuku lightly to his threats, but at the same time, she knows he's just a kid, a powerful kid, but a kid nonetheless. Are you done, sweetheart? I'm done. Let's go back to the lobby. So Lashina doesn't try to kill me. As they both arrive at the lobby in the Hall of Justice, as he sat down on the same couch he was sitting on earlier, as Lashina came into the room and sat right next to Izuku, you seem to be in a good mood. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm in a pretty good mood. I just got eating something tasty called pizza. I quite enjoyed it. Before Lashina could say anything else, the doors open to the Hall of Justice, or the Hall of Justice doors open up as Superman comes through with a woman Izuku hasn't seen before. Flash ran over to Barda. Oh, pause. I forgot to get a picture of Flash, so here it is. So anyways, as Flash ran over to Big Barda, it's been a while, Barda. How you been? Batman was too late to stop Flash from saying her name. Flash goes flying, flying through the wall, getting hit by Omega Beam. This is not good. Izuku, stop attacking. Izuku wasn't listening to Lashina. As he looked up the couch with his telekinesis, as he, as he threw it at Big Barda with Pretty much. As Big Barda backhand the couch, as he goes flying to the other side of the room. We'll have a proper discussion, Lashina, af after I deal with this. There won't be any discussion later after this, lady. I'm going to kill you. And it depends on who tries to stop me or get in my way. They might die as well. I do hope the one that calls Superman tries to stop me, because I really... I would really like to kill him specifically. As he rushed towards Big Barda, using his matter manipulation to create several metal spears, as he lunged the spears at Big Barda, trying to pierce her. As he's lunging the spears with his telekinesis, as Barda dodges each each attempt of a t of of his attack with great ease. She has a smile on her face. As he uses matter manipulation to create several small knives, as he launched them at Big Barda with his telekinesis, as, as Big Barda catches the knife and tosses them to the side with great ease. Is that, is that all you got, Slugger? You're going to have to try a whole lot harder than that to kill me. Let's see if you could dodge this. Sorry, let's try again. Let's see if you let's see if you could dodge this one. As everyone noticed, Izu, Izuku's eyes started to glow a bright green color as he shot out his Omega Beam. As Superman comes in front of the Omega Beam, as, as Superman goes flying outside of the Hall of Justice, skidding across the street. That's what you get for getting in my way. Now where's that traitor? Where were we? Oh, I remember. I was about to kill you. 
before he could move, he got wrapped around Lachina's whip. She hasn't activated the electricity feature of her whip yet. So yeah, she just wrapped around him to stop him. What are you doing? Release me at once. You need to calm down and stop fighting. I can't allow you to do this. And why not? I just want to get this done and go home. Because she's your mother. I will not allow you to kill your own mother. Izuku stops struggling as he remained quiet for a few minutes. What type of game are you playing at, big sis? No game is true. I heard it from Darkseid himself. Your father sent you here to kill your own mother. But good old, but uh, but the old man specifically told me that I don't have a mother. He lied. I don't know why or what game he's playing at. Darkseid is fully aware that you're not powerful enough to kill your own mother. You're far too young. So I don't know what his motives are, truly are. Or what or or what his end game is. Now I'm going to release you. Remain from attacking your own mother. Fine. I'm never going home, am I? Sadly, you can't. It's not safe there. Your father wanted me to kill you if you failed. If you failed to kill your mother. And he most likely sent another... Sorry. He most likely sent someone else after us if we failed the mission. So let me get this straight. If I failed to kill my own mother, good old dad sent someone to kill us. Great. Love my life. You kind of blasted the only person that could protect you from... Sorry. You... You kind of blasted the only person that could protect you with your Omega Beams. Not my fault he ran into them. That's on him, not me. He's alive, I think. As Big Bardo walked up to Izuku and unwrapped, unwrapped him from the whip. Then she picked him up and hold Izuku in her arms. What are you doing? Release me now, woman gonna happen now that I know you're my son and I don't need some stupid DNA test to confirm it. I can feel it. You're definitely mine. As Big Barda sees Superman come back into Hall of Justice as his suit's a little tattered up from being hit from an Omega Beam. Sorry about my son Superman but thank you for telling me about my son. I'll be taking him home. Lashina please follow me. We have a few things we need to talk about. I haven't forgive you yet, but for but for right now, I can look past it. I'll have one woman stick with you for a while, ju just in case. So something does happen. You can't be too careful when it comes to dark side. Thank you, Superman. Most appreciated. No problem, Barda. I hope my son didn't hurt you too badly. I'm fine. It's just a scratch. He's definitely Dark Side's kid. His Omega Beams are a lot more weaker than his father's, so I'm perfectly fine. You know I'm right here. I'll show you how weak my Omega Beams are. As everyone was surprised, Superman started to laugh a little bit as he ruffled his hair. You arrogant little fucking shit. I'm gonna kill you. Language, young man, as she covers her son's mouth. A couple of seconds later, he, um, she removes her hand from his mouth as she gives him a, a mother-y, uh, a, a mother stare that means he's in trouble. I'm sorry. Wait, why am I sorry? What did you do to me, woman? Stop calling me that. I'm not just, I'm not just, don't call me woman. I'm your mother. And I have a good idea how you were raised on the Publix. Sorry to burst your little... Sorry to burst your little bubble. But things are going to change. And you're not going to... And you're not going to like it. One bit. But it doesn't matter. No matter if you like it or not. 
You are my son, and I am your mother, and you will obey. Whatever. As Big Barda and Lachina and Wonder Roman go back to Big Barda's house, Izuku, Iother, Izuku pouted the whole way there. Twenty minutes later, they arrive at Big Barter's house, Izuku, Izuku's new home. As Big Barter is serving tea to Wonder Woman in Lashina, while she sat her son in the opposite room, as she gave him some juice that she had in the refrigerator, cut to the outside of Big Barter's house, as Granny Goodness is, is staring across the street. It's a shame, really. I guess gra I guess Granny has to discipline disaboy uh, disa uh, uh, disobedient children. As a boom tube opened behind her, Steppenwolf comes through. Hello, Granny Goodness. What are you doing here, Steppenwolf? I'm on a mission from Lord Darkside. Fully aware of your current mission, Granny Goodness. Darkside requests you back at Apoplex. But what about the, but what about the boy? My orders were were very clear. Lord Darkside said to leave the boy here. Yes, it can't be helped. Very well, I'll return home. As Granny Guinness made it way back to Apopolis, uh, as she entered the throne room with Stephen Wolf, as they both kneeled down on one knee in front of Darkside. Good, you're here, Granny Goodness. Sir, why did you pull me from the mission? I mean no disrespect. I'm just curious, sir. I no longer want to see the boy dead, regardless of what path he takes. It would be a shame to lose such a potential son. Earth will be the perfect place to mold him. He'll learn much on that planet. You shall leave the boy alone. There are no... They are no longer your problem. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Lord Darkseid. You may return to your duties. Me and Steppenwolf have things to discuss. Of course, Lord Darkseid. As she left the throne room, Lord Darkseid, what can I do for you? There is a creature that's been wiping out planets. Causing ma ma mass chaos, killing the inhabitants of the worlds. I believe they call him Doomsday. I want you to locate him and direct him, lure him to Earth. Of course, Lord Darkseid. May I ask why? I have my reasons. You shall you shall start this mission in seven years. It it will give him some time to grow into his powers. This will be a Great test for the boy. May I speak freely, Lord Darkseid? May. Proceed. I got to the conclusion that you wanted Big Barter dead. Originally, I did, Steppenwolf. My son can learn a lot from his mother. Only reason she's alive is because my son will benefit from it. I might kill her. Afterwards, who knows what the future holds. When you lure Doomsday to Earth, I want you to observe his progress, but do not interfere in his fight against Doomsday. If he dies by the hands of that monster, so be it. This will be the first of many trials he'll be taking. Conquering a world and bringing me Green Lanterns was a good first start. But he has a long way to go to prove to me that, that he's worthy to be my son. Unlike Kelebak, Izuku has brains. As you command, Lord Darkseid. We cut to Earth, to Izuku and his mother. Now that we have time to have our nice little chat between the two of us, I see you and my son are quite close. Lord Dark... Sorry. Lord... When... Sorry, try this again. When Lord Darkseid created Izuku with his DNA and yours, 
I've been taking care of him ever since he was a baby. I won't lie to you, Big Bardo. I wasn't too happy, uh, happy about it at first. But the little rug rat grew on me. I do care about him a, a great deal. I might not be his biological mother, but I love him like he was my own son. And nor will I interfere with you when it comes to Izuku. So I take it you're the one who named him? Yes. I like the name. I heard it once, oh, on the last time I was on Earth. I kind of took a liking to the name. I take it you're not going to stay on Earth for very long? No, I must return to face whatever judgment is waiting for me. As long as he's safe, that's all I care about. I still have re responsibilities back on Apopolix. You know it's highly likely Darkseid will kill you, right? That's my fate, so be it. Please, let's take care of him. At this current time, Izuku is in the in the separate room, in front of the TV, with Diana. So he wasn't in the same room with the both of them, so, they, so he didn't overhear their conversation. I'm truly sorry, Barda, what happened between us. I was jealous of you. Let my jealousy of you compromise our friendship. You tried to kill me and my late husband. I know. I'm fully aware of what type of woman I am. But my time with your son has changed me. And I would never put him in danger or betray him in any way. He's the closest thing to family that I have. And for my son, I forgive you. I don't know if we could be... Oh, sorry. I don't know if we could be the same friends like like we were, but I'm willing to start over with you, Lashina. Thank you, Barter. I would like that very much. I'm going to say my goodbyes, then I'll be heading back to Apopolix. As Lashina got off the couch and walked into the other room, where Izuku's watching cartoons with Wonder Woman, a.k.a. Diana. You're enjoying yourself. Yes, I am. These, um, what they call, oh, sorry, give me a second, guys. Please. These cartoons are very entertaining, especially how that interesting coyote trying to kill that road owner is quite entertaining. Who never kills it. He always fails in hilarious ways. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Well, I'm going to be heading back to Apocalypse. You're already? Fine. I'm, I'm ready. We talked about this. You're not coming with me. You're staying here. It's ridiculous. Of course I'm coming. Apoplex is my home. It might be your home, but it's, you need to stay here with your mother. No arguing. This is for the best. I want you to go, though. You're by my side my whole life. No, this is hard for me as well. This is where our paths part ways. This is... This is not a goodbye. We'll see each other again. Your mother will be taking care of you from now on. Try not to kill her. As she gives Izuku a big hug. Are you sure that's wise to go back to Dark Side? Lashina? I no. But my place is on Apoplex. I am still the leader of the female theories. I need to return. I'll see, I'll see you later, little guy, as she ruffles his hair. Then she opens a boom tube, back to Apopolix, as she disappears. I see she left already. Yes, yeah, she did, Barda. So what are you going to do now? Oh, well, I have another mouth to feed, and I need to spend some time to get to know my son. I understand. I'll get out of your hair. I'll stick around for a little bit to make sure nothing happens. Then I'll, then I'll head back to the Hall of Justice. It's always been a pleasure, Barda. Don't be a stranger. Don't worry, I won't, Diana. As Barda watches Diana leave her house, leaving her alone with her son. By the way, how old are you in any ways? Seven. We have much to do. For starters, we need to get you new clothes. 
then I need to enroll you in school. What the hell is school? Is that some sort of food? And she smiles and she cackles a little bit. No, it's not some sort of food, sweetheart. It's a place where we, where we sent children to learn. Is it some sort of prison? No, it's not. As we time skip, seven years later, Izuku is now 14 years old. He has changed a lot since since his time on Earth. He got extremely close to his mother. He still doesn't see humans in the very high light, but he no longer wants to kill as much under his mother's tutelage. He became a lot more disciplined. To announce to the un, but the league is unaware. Dark side managed to get some DNA from Supergirl, from from their last conflict with Superman, as he created his own clone of Supergirl for his son, for a future wife for him. She's been training on Apoplex for seven years. As you see a 14-year-old boy with green hair standing in front of, right next to Big Bardo, holding a suitcase. Do I really need to, do I really need to do this? Yes, I do. I agree with Batman. It's time for you to join the Teen Titans. You're, you're, you're around the age. And the leader of the Teen Titans, Black Canary, can teach you, th can, can teach you several things that, that you need to learn. You really need to learn some social skills. The whole time you've been at school, you never once ha had a friend. And it worries me. That again, I have no interest in befriending a bunch of humans. That's the main reason why I'm having you join the Teen Titans. Not everyone on the team, on, on that team is human. Fine, Mom, I'll try this Teen Titan thing. That's my boy. Cut to Apopolix. A clone of Supergirl, known as Vex, was dodging several Lachina's electric whip attacks. As she wrapped the whip around her forearm, even though it's, it's electrocuting her, she, as she pushed through the pain, As she yanked Lashina close to her, as she cocked her hand backwards, as she was about to strike, but she stopped mere inches away from her face, as she has a smirk on her face, as she's about 14 years old, as she kicked Lashina in the stomach, as she goes flying against the wall of the stadium, she put her heel of her foot against Lashina's neck. I win. All right, all right, you got me. Fair and square, Vex. As the Vex removed her foot and helped Lashina up to her feet. So Lashina, when will I meet my mysterious fiancé? I'm kind of getting tired of waiting to meet him. As Lashina has a smirk on her face, now you want to meet him? The last time I heard you talk about this, you weren't very happy that you... you I clearly remember you saying you're not marrying any any of the dark side children. That you don't you you uh, that I'm sorry that you don't even know him. I was just pissed off. I was created to be married to one of Dark Side's sons. I thought Dark Side wanted me to marry Kellaback. Not only he is hideous, but he's a prick. But I didn't know I was going going to be married off to the youngest son. Izuku. And I've been asking around about him. And everyone I've talked to seemed to think highly of him. So it, so he piqued my interest. Well, I'm surprised as well. I figured I would have been killed when I got back from not completing the mission when I was with Izuku. But I'm also more surprised that you're looking forward to meeting him. You seem to know him quite a bit. What type of person he is. I'm curious. Every time I ask someone about him, they just tell me about his deeds. Nothing about his personality. Oh, what he's like now. I haven't seen him in seven years. I have no doubt you two will get along just fine. 
Even I came to realize Lord Darkseid favors Izuku more than his other children. You won't have to wait long. Your training is almost complete. The moment you finish your training, you're free to finally meet your fiancé. But I'm looking forward to meeting him. If I catch him with any other girls, I'll kill them. I won't have competition. Don't get me wrong. I'll marry him, but doesn't but that doesn't mean I love him. I'm only doing this I'm only doing what I'm told. And af and after after all I haven't even met him yet. This is not going to be a marriage of love. I will be able to 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 produce powerful offsprings. With the youngest son of Darkseid, with my Kryptonian blood, we'll make strong offspring. We cut back to Earth. You're here. You're here a bit early, but it's good to see you again. My, you have grown quite to be a handsome young man. Don't tell me you for you you you've already forgot about me. You rude son. Hey mom, it's very nice it's very nice to see you again, Black Canary. Please come inside. I'll guide you to your room. The Teen Titans are no are on a mission right now. So no one's here. As Big Barda gave her, her her son a hug, good goodbye. Be good and play nice. Please. I don't want to hear from Black Canary that you're attempting to kill your teammates. See about that, as long as they don't piss me off. As she sigh, he might be difficult at first. I do apologize in, in advance. He's not He's not very fond of humans. All right, Barda. Don't worry, your son's in good hands. Canary, I'll be periodically coming by to check on your progress. Make some friends. You worry your, you worry, oh, sorry, you worry your mother. As she leaves Izuku with Black Canary. Black Canary shows Izuku around the Teen Titan Tower. And eventually showed him to his room. She allowed him to get situated in his room while she informed the Teen Titans that their new teammate member has finally arrived. He, uh, she relayed that information to, to Robin to, to relay it to the rest of the team. They've already know Izuki was coming in weeks in advance. Starfire was quite, quite, um, quite excited to, to meet a new friend. Raven didn't really react to it much. Beast Boy was curious what type of person. Same, uh, same with Cyborg. He, he had the same thought process as Beast Boy. Meanwhile, Izuki started to unpack his belongings. It took him about 40 minutes to fully unpack as he heard a knock on his door. When, uh, when he opened the door, he saw Black Canary. Don't you come downstairs and with the rest of the team. The rest of the team are waiting for you. We're throwing you a little bit of a welcome party. All right, just give me a few minutes or a few seconds. She waited for Izuku to come downstairs as she informed the team that he'll be heading downstairs in a few moments now. Understood, Canary. I can't wait to meet our new friend and teammate. Please calm down, Star. You're jumping around too much. Sorry, Raven. I'm just excited to meet this new teammate of ours. As everyone turned around when the door opened to the living room area, as everyone sees a green-haired boy with green eyes walk in the living area, sitting down in the opposite chair, or the empty chair. Good you're here. Everyone, this is Izuku. Introduce yourself to your new, team, to your new teammate. As Starfire fly towards Izuku, as she gets extremely close to him, and she grabbed onto his hand and starts shaking it repeatedly. Hi, new friend. It's very nice to meet you. I'm Star. Starfire. Or Star for short. As Raven used her powers to separate Starfire from, from Izuku, sorry about her. She doesn't believe in personal space. I'm, I'm Raven. No oh man, name's Beast Boy. Love the hair. We we match. I have a feeling we're gonna get along just fine. 
And I'm cyborg. I'm the tech. I'm I'm the tech head of the team. I'm Robin. I'm the leader when on the field. Well, uh, welcome aboard. It's nice to meet you all, I guess. And you know my name is Izuku. I guess it's nice to meet all of you. All the introductions out of the way. It's time to begin. Sorry, it's just time to begin. Enjoy yourself, team. But don't stay up too late. Tomorrow we'll be starting your training again. Or, or sorry, we'll be starting training in the morning. Beast Boy waited for Black Canary to leave the room. Spill it, man. I, I overheard Black Canary talking to Superman when we were down the Hall of Justice a day, a couple days ago. Is it true? What are you talking about? What's true? Really, from Apopolix? Give me, give me the details, man. After Beast Boy said that, everyone turned their attention towards Izuku. Apopolis is my home world. I came to Earth when I was seven. And before you ask, the rest of it's personal, so, so don't bother asking. Please excuse me, I'm going to bed. As he walked up the stairs to his room, a bit irritated by Beast Boy's question, he doesn't like to talk about his time on Apopolis. It's all personal. Great job, idiot. You just pissed off our new teammate. You're so insensitive. Really don't see the big deal, Raven. I was just curious. Well, um, sorry. I was so I was curious if he's from Apopolis. It's not like he's the son of Darkseid or anything. Beast Boy had no idea how right he was. Several hours later, while he's reading a book, he heard a knock on his door. As he opened up to see Raven in front of his doorway. You're Raven, right? Yeah, that's my name. Can I come in? Just want to talk. Or why not? Come in. As he steps out of the way for her to step inside his room. When she entered his room, she recognized his room is quite similar to hers. There's a lot of books and only lights in the room. Well, the only light in the room is candles. As she sat down in the bed, I'm sorry about Beast Boy. He's kind of a loudmouth. He doesn't really think be, be, uh, before he speaks. It's fine. It's just a touchy subject for me. Let's just say my childhood wasn't normal. Please understand, my childhood wasn't normal as well. I take it because you're from Apopolis. You're, you're a new god. That I am. Regardless of how insensitive a beast boy have, has been. Welcome to the team. If you ever need to talk, my room is right next to yours. I'll leave you alone. I'm going to go back to my room. I'll see you tomorrow, Izuku. Good night, Raven. Good night, Izuku. We're going to stop it here. I hope you guys have a good night and day. Do my time stones, and I'll catch you in the next video.